Hello and welcome to the next episode of the All For Inclusion pod. Um, today, I am joined by two guests, one very special guest and one maybe not so special guest in uh, in a sense, but um, my not so special guest is actually coming in to, uh, to co-host with me. Um, so I'll bring Lorraine in first. Uh, how are you doing, Lorraine? I'm very well, thank you, Scott. Although I'm not very pleased to hear that I'm a not so special guest. That's so <laughs> but then again, Catherine is a super special guest, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's only because I'm comparing you to to Catherine where you're you're not so special in that sense. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> so do you mind just introducing yourself um, yeah. to the people listening in the rain? Absolutely. So uh, my name's Lorraine, and I own Intrepid English, which is my online English school. And uh, I've known Scott for a little while now. We're both passionate about inclusion. And uh, he invited me, as he said, to co-host this podcast today. And I jumped at the chance because I'm super, super impressed by this guest and the wonderful work that they're doing. So I'll let her introduce herself. Oh, do you want to make an introduction to Catherine? And then I oh, will pop her on the screen. I can. I haven't prepared anything, but sure, <laughs> oh. sure. So uh, Catherine um, works with the amazing Gedja Foundation. Is that Gedja or Gedja? How should I pronounce that, Catherine? Gedja. Gedja. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions during today's podcast. <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, from from what I understand, your your organisation helps women and girls in Uganda, in rural Uganda to um, find education, support, and have more independence. Um, is yeah. that right? Yeah. How do I do? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Great, lovely. Excellent. So, um, Catherine, do you mind just telling us to start with a little bit about, about yourself? Um, okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Scott, for inviting me uh, to this podcast. Uh, my name is Catherine. I am a Ugandan. Um, I work with Geja Women Foundation. The word Geja means growing big. So uh, we want women to grow big, not in size, but you know, financially, mentally. So that's why we chose the word Geja. I work with Geja Women Foundation. It's a Ugandan um, uh, NGO. And we support women and girls uh, through skills development, menstrual hygiene management, and educational support for the girl child. Uh, so basically, that's what we do. Excellent, excellent. And um, and how long has uh, has Gedja been uh, been been around? Um, they just started uh, at the end of 2015, so we started in 2016 uh, until today. Those are uh, those five years. How was uh, how was kind of Gadja and and Uganda kind of impacted um, by by COVID? Uh, I think just like any other business, uh, Geja was also impacted by COVID-19. Being, uh, being an NGO, we depend more on donations and grants. And because during uh, COVID, people were not working. And so uh, we got challenges with funds. Uh, we had to, our kids has to, have, had to stay at school, those that we support under the educational support. Uh, because gatherings were not allowed in Uganda, we had to stop with the menstrual hygiene campaigns in communities and schools. Uh, our workers had to go home and, you know, start doing other things. Like it impacted the whole program and everything. Yeah, so I can imagine that being uh, being very hard. Now I know very. Lorraine has prepared a list of questions for you, <laughs> so I'm going to let Lorraine start with her list, and then uh, if there's anything that that I jump in with halfway through, apologies. No, 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 absolutely. I didn't want to uh, take over your your podcast here, but yes, I am very excited to see you, Catherine. <laughs> so um, it's particularly interesting for me because. I'm really passionate about education in general, but particularly for young girls and for women 
um, mm. purely because in, in many areas of the world, there is such a, a big gap between education, which is available for, for men and for, for women and girls. Um, yeah. So the so Gager Foundation um, is doing several things which I find just fantastic. Firstly, educating, well, trying to help girls to, to see a future for a start, um, understand people are there supporting them and mm. uh, understanding more about themselves and their bodies. So um, that's, that's just fantastic for me um, to, to understand that. Well done. Um, as a as a startup, which is quite young, uh, you're, you've got a growing team, haven't you? Um, how are you How are you managing things? Are you all based in in rural Uganda, where you you live, or do you have other um, branches in different places in Uganda? Um, we are currently located on. We only have one branch that's in Uganda, in a certain village called Mpiji, that's outside Kampala, the capital city um that's where we are but earlier this year we uh partnered uh with another organization one of our supporters uh co-founded Geja in german so now we also have a team of other people in german yes uh with Geja also we just start there so i would say that is the second branch yeah Excellent, lovely. Yeah, I, I, I read that uh, Angela, the, the founder, she was she uh, took part in uh, a startup initiative um, to, to get the business started. And uh, this is something that's really sort of relevant for me right now because uh, I'm in a similar sort of stage of applying for a grants and things like that. So um, yeah, it's really interesting to me to see how people are doing it in different places in the world, but getting help from main organizations established organizations must be really helpful so how if you're based in one place how do you reach as many women as you reach how do you do that traveling quite a lot so we have um uh, we have like you said we have very many things that we do uh with the women and then with the girls so with the menstrual hygiene management we travel a lot we travel uh, all over the country to deliver the trainings, to do the awareness campaigns on menstruation and hygiene. So uh, that's how we reach uh, some of these women. We, uh, we also partner with uh, organizations that help us reach the women in different mm -hmm. communities and districts around the country. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So I've got a real question about this because I understand that there are many challenges to what you're doing partly to do with with running an NGO, but I guess there must be cultural challenges as well. When you're going to maybe rural places in Uganda, how, how are you received there? Are you quite welcome or do you have difficulties with, with locals? Uh, well, Uganda is, uh, Uganda has friendly people. We are very friendly. So um, we are always welcomed mm -hmm. in, um, Great in communities where we go but it depends uh the, the challenge comes in uh when you're going to talk about menstruation on the subject you're going to talk about so if you're going to talk about women empowerment you always be welcome but then if you switch to um menstruation then the men will think that that's not their topic they're not supposed to be uh in that space with women when you're going to talk about menstruation and so most times they are, they, they they leave yeah yeah right that's really interesting um yeah i i read that um uganda is one of the is right currently one of the most entrepreneurial countries in the world mm -hmm. so there's a huge potential at the moment for new organizations to come up um yeah. are you are you um you know do you get a lot of support for this this kind of thing because scott and i are from the uk we both have our own organizations and it is mm. challenging isn't it scott so we can talk about it from the point of view of someone from the uk but uh you know are you getting a lot of support and uh raising awareness uh in your country for what you're doing it is very challenging also i think just like in the UK, it is very challenging, mostly when you are fundraising. 
it is very, very hard. Starting from, you know, registering the organization, the procedures, because I think our laws are also not very clear, but then you have to register a business to operate it in Uganda. But the process itself takes like forever. And then you have to look for funds. And I don't know, from our government, you will not any get any free money, even if you're supporting women or girls, girls, you will not get money. You have to look for the funds yourself from anywhere. So very challenging. Yeah. You have one, I should say one, I feel like one isn't the right word for this, but earned um, mm -hmm. two, at least two really competitive grants already, haven't you? Which is fantastic. Yes, so yes. yeah, that's great to know. Can you tell us about those? Uh, um, I think one of it was uh, Impact Hub. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that, that I like did, yeah, um, mm -hmm. so uh, in the process of looking for funds, we do apply for grants, uh, write proposals, and then you get selected. So this is how we get uh, our funds. Uh, the two that have I have been I have won. Um, I think one was in last year in 2021 with Impact Her. It is uh, it supports also female entrepreneurs in uh, Africa. Uh, starting with uh, giving you mentorship and uh, sessions on entrepreneurship and all that. And then at the end of the program, you get uh, some little fund to support a certain um, category or department in the business. Uh, and then the other one was in 2020, it was for uh, impact. Uh, creating impact in Uganda in the lives of women and girls. And that was under the menstrual hygiene management program. Wonderful. Great, great job. Um, okay, Scott, any questions so far before I just swim on forward? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, well, actually, yeah. So, I mean, when you go into the, uh, to the, to the different um, communities to, to speak to people, mm -hmm what's the do you find that most communities are are very similar or are there sort of big big differences between the communities um communities around um, around uganda at least in central okay because we have like the central the northern and then the eastern they are very different the central community is different from the northern community and before you go there, you already know, because we know these people that the northerners, this is how they behave and this is how they welcome you. So they are totally different, but as Ugandans, we are already well conversant with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know when we when we spoke beforehand, um, we mm. spoke about um, sort of Ugandan people in a, in a wheelchair and, and with disabilities, um, sort of, you know how how um, much do you get into into contact and support people with the disabilities as well uh, uh, um, it is uh it is very hard i have not been so much in contact with very many people with disabilities uh we work with a few uh in the women startup department and then we have one deaf person in our production on our production team um what i can say about disability it is hard for you to get a job in uganda if you're disabled um, because we think at least the, the society thinks that you are unable to deliver to work so it's actually most of the disabled people that I have seen in Uganda, most of them are beggars on the yeah. streets. Um, but I have also seen um, in Kampala a market that is dedicated for the disabled people. It is, all called, it is also called the disabled uh, market. It is for them to work from there. Um, the other thing I, is, uh, Uganda is not accessible for people with disability. 
starting with toilets. Our buildings are not accessible for such people. Like, it's like we don't consider them at all. Um, and I think the problem comes in uh, because we don't know how to deal with them. Um, I'll give an example uh, of our, 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 our girl here, that the, the one that works in, uh, in production. She's deaf and I always find it hard to communicate with her. Uh, and I always feel that she's being left alone because others are jazzing, having fun, and she's just quiet. Um, so a few weeks back, she brought me a book a sign language book because i think she realized that it's hard for me to communicate with her so she brought me a book to enable me communicate to her and i have learned a few things so now we are kind of connecting so um it's hard for you to get a disabled people on your team uh, because you can't have one of them she'll be bored like this one she's she's always bored keeping quiet so uh the past week i talked to my team and i was like you know i think we need to get some other person another disabled person maybe a, a deaf to be with her so that she gets a friend someone to talk to at work someone to understand her better so i think that's why people don't really you know, consider giving them jobs because of communicate communication, how to communicate with them, how to relate with them, and all that. It's a shame, but that's unfortunately similar here in the UK, isn't it, Scott? In, in many ways, um, just not not knowing how to, not having any bad yeah. intentions, but then you know, just then, oh, it's easier if we don't. That's that's the big challenge that we need to overcome, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, what you're doing is putting accessibility to um, to the young young women, young ladies in uh, in Uganda. Now, I think we've got someone else who's uh, who's about to join us, someone called Reynard. Is, yes. that, uh, is that a friend of yours? Catherine? <laughs> yes, I'll just yes. bring her in. <laughs> Hi, Reynard. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us. How are you guys? Very I've well. I've been listening. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you do uh, at the at the Gaja Foundation then, Reynard? Mm, um, part of the menstrual campaign, I organize the campaigns in schools and in communities. I'm also part of the marketing team for the reusable sanitary pads. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. How do you how do you find um, how do you find that you're welcomed in yeah, in yeah. schools are you welcomed uh with open arms mm, uh in schools like at first they it's a bit hard until you explain to them the benefits of these sessions to the young girls and boys and in most cases teachers are not around during the sessions because they feel shy like yeah but all in all in the end we deliver the information and surprisingly the girls and the boys always have questions and i believe they learn a lot from the sessions excellent excellent i'll, uh, I'll let lorraine get back to her list of uh <laughs> Of, questions. of questions yeah. uh, <laughs> very long list there it's uh, it might not be I, uh, I, was, I was reading up on the wonderful work you guys are doing and um i just yeah I've, i'm just so impressed with it all here in the uk this type of education is provided by the teachers in the schools normally but as you can imagine they're oftentimes male and they're not you know if they are uh, female teachers even then they wouldn't be sort of experts in how to teach kids about these things so I think it's just wonderful um, that you're giving young girls an opportunity to learn more about themselves and young boys the opportunity to learn more about your girls as well that's really really important I think um, 
and there's there's a there's a concept that keeps coming up in the conversation so far and i think it's it's about the intersection between education and you know having independence in yourself um and for a lot of of young girls uh, because of misconceptions because of things that people don't quite understand they can be held back i'm sure in uganda and in many many countries all over the world um so I'm particularly interested to ask you, Catherine or Reynard, um, about your work then with other kinds of educational support. Um, and it, it, on, your, on your website, it says that you're offering scholarships to marginalised girls to be able to stay in school. Can you tell us any more about that? That sounds like such a fantastic initiative. <laughs> Um, so, um, before we started the uh, educational support program under the Gage Women Foundation, um, one of our girls, Prosy, I think she's also on our website, um, Prosy was uh, going to be married. Her parents were sending her off for marriage um, because she went into her periods and she asked for pads and the parents didn't want to spend on pads. So they decided to send her off for marriage. Uh, that's how. That's when we found her, and we brought her in, and she became part of us. And so she gave us a chance to also start Safe Girl to do the reusable sanitary pads. Um, so uh, on the educational part, uh, I think in Uganda they always consider um, the boys more, and first they first consider the boys before the girls. It is starting to change, but it, this is how it has been happening, because uh, they think uh, they will waste their money on a girl child, because at the end of it, maybe in the middle of the, their education, they'll get married, they'll get pregnant, and they don't have to waste their money on that. So they would rather send a boy to school than leave the girl at home do housework uh, than sending both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is starting to change, really. But uh, in a family where there are more boys, less girls, or equal, they would send the, the boys at school first. So in the educational support, for us, we support uh, the girls that are maybe orphanages, uh, those that uh, parents can not afford education and they decide to uh, send the girl off for marriage or just leave her home to do housework. So those are the girls, specific girls that we support under the educational support. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. So this organization is, is really impacting not only this generation, but the next as well. Because if girls can learn more about their own bodies, they'll have more autonomy, more independence about their own bodies and maybe can make more choice about yeah I mean I'm not sure culturally but but you know about co contraception and about family planning in the future um which is which is wonderful and it all connects doesn't it everything connects to one another yeah, um, that, yeah. I, I read that I read that the average number of children per woman in Uganda is currently 5.6 which is really quite high um number com compared to the rest of the world in places like the UK and in Japan, you know, the, the number is, is around one or under one. Mm. Um, so we've got a, a shrinking what population in, in some countries. So I think yes, this kind of education really has come at such a great time. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, giving you as much support as we can and raising awareness about that in everywhere is important, I think. Because the, yeah. the discussions that we're having are, are global in many cases, you know, patriarchal views, beliefs about a woman's role um, and about how they should be dependent um, on, on the male earners in the family. These are conversations mm. that I've had many people in many, many places in the world. So it's so important that we're having these conversations for a start and that you guys are doing uh, the wonderful work that you, you're doing. Catherine, can I ask you, you, how can we support you more? How how can we help you more um, to, to do this really important work that you're doing? 
Um, our, most of our work depends on donations and grants. So we are constantly looking for people to support our work. Uh, just like you are interested in education, you might say, I would like to support, to support a child under your education or support program or something like that. So we are um, uh, looking for people to support us in all the different programs that we do under the Gage Women Foundation, starting with the Women's Startup Program, the Menstrual Hygiene and the Education. We are also looking to uh, for partnerships with uh, different organizations, uh, uh, UN, UNDP, uh, UNICAF, you know, the organizations that support girl child education, organizations that support women empowerment. I believe if they come on board, we can be able to make massive impact all around the mm -hmm. country and beyond it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's lovely and clear. Scott, any questions there? I don't want to monopolize the conversation. <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, I've, I've brought you in uh, to co-host as uh, as more of uh, an expert in in your field, where I look at more people with um, with disabilities, and you look at, uh, at at more the educational side of of things. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to go back to uh, to Reynard and ask uh, Reynard another question, actually, about uh, about the schools. And do is there any um, any children in in schools with with disabilities, are the physical or hidden disabilities? And and if so, is there any support for them, or what is the support? Uh, so the campaigns we do are mostly in rural areas of Uganda uh, and for me all the time I've been doing these campaigns I've seen a few um, a few of them attending school I think they are like I've seen like five six for all these years that yeah. we've been doing the campaigns. And it's mostly uh, girls with, like the deaf girls, those who don't talk, mostly of them, they do not attend schools. Some of them, they are taken to special, to special schools. Uh, in kids in wheelch wheelchairs, they have I've only seen one and we we've not like they have not received the special care like you can find at school where the washrooms they are not considered in classrooms like during the lessons they are still not considered and then it's more of doing the work, taking them on the pace of, of the students that are okay. And yeah, I have not accounted many of them mm. during yeah. the campaigns. Yeah. yeah. So probably most of them stay at home or they are taken to special schools, which yeah. we have not visited yet okay okay yeah. and and obviously um you know to me I've, I've done a lot of these uh a lot of these podcasts and and a lot of the reasons why i want to to do them is because all i want to do is just tell a story and uh, raise awareness um but for me uh this one isn't about just telling a story it's it's not about raising awareness it's it's far more important than that it's it's something where i'm hoping that people will be able to to listen to this and and look at your website and look at ways that they can make a donation and and you know whether it's a small amount or a large amount it all adds up and it all goes to supporting empowering um educating 
uh, women in Uganda, which, as Lorraine pointed out earlier, is such an entrepreneurial country. Um, so what is the best way that someone can provide, a, you know, someone who's listening to this, what's the best way they can provide a donation? Uh, we have, I think... Would it be, on your, uh, or would it be the donation well, page on your website? That's the best best place to go. Uh, yeah, they can use, uh, someone that wants to donate to support can use the donation uh, link on our website. But we also have uh, um, a campaign running on uh, global giving, global giving platform. I don't know if you know it. Uh, there are two, two, two uh, fundraising campaigns running uh, still under the Gay German Foundation. So they can also uh, donate through those links. Excellent. Because all of those, all of those links, your website, straight to the donation page on your website, and those global links, I will yeah. put in the notes that come with this podcast so no one has to go looking for anything all they've got to do is read the commentary underneath press a button go straight there and it's as simple as simple as that to be able to, to support you guys really um and obviously the money goes to you know i've seen on the website where you where you break it down to x amount of pounds gives this x amount of pounds gives this and and i think it's something like uh as 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 little as seven pounds um provides um reusable pads which you know that's that's gonna help you know a child or, or, or a woman for for a long time so it's it's not not what i'm trying to say is we don't need to pay much money to be able to give a lot of support. And I yeah. think that's important for people to know. Lovely. I was wondering, Catherine or Reynard, if you could tell us about some of the wonderful people that you've helped so far. Do you have any um, stories that you can tell us of the young girls and women that you've supported already and uh, the impact that you've had on their lives? Mm. I will tell you <laughs> about one, and then Rina can also tell you her story. Um, uh, the significant one for me. Um, so, okay, I'll start with this. We have uh, we have a women's center where Gay Women Foundation is located. We have a center, and we have uh, space uh, where women and girls can always come, learn skills, um, feel at home. So they are always here, anytime, any day, they are here because it's a women's center for them. Um, and then one woman that we supported was uh, in 2019, she lost uh, her, her daughters, her children in uh, a tree. A tree fell on her house when the children were in the house, uh, three of them died. Um, um, and then one of our supporters came and we told her a story of the women because she lost her children and she was depressed. She had no house and she was sleeping in the kitchen, a small kitchen like this, not these modern kitchens, very small. She was sleeping in the kitchen with her two uh, granddaughters. So uh, when one of our supporters came to Uganda to visit us, uh, she went back and fundraised money and reconstructed for her a home. She was very, very happy. She still is, and she always wants to give us gifts for that. Um, so now she has a home where she can stay with her grandchildren. And for me, that is incredible, seeing that we put a smile on her face. You know, she was very depressed. She couldn't do anything. But now she's, you know, she now comes and participates in our activities. Uh, so that for me if, is, is incredible and keeps me going. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine with, with, with you know, you, you're traveling a lot, you're working so hard and, um, you know, it must be exhausting sometimes, but 
seeing the impact you're making in someone's life, I'm sure, must make it all worthwhile. Uh, all the work that yeah. you're doing. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, Catherine. Uh, Raymond, mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us about someone whose life you've impacted? Uh, for me, there are two girls. I'll start with one. Uh, her name is Maria. Uh, she came like still at the center, I think, during the COVID time. Yes. Yeah, that is the time she got pregnant. And she couldn't go back home. So we brought her at the center. She gave birth to her beautiful baby girl, and now she's back to school. She went back to school because she was young. She's supposed to go back to school. The girl has grown, and I'm happy that she was able to take care of the child, give back to this child, and then still have a chance to go back to school. And then another girl that I feel... Um, I feel connected to is Felista. She's now part of the women's startups. Um, uh, she's not like her parents, her stepmom doesn't like her so much. So she wants her out of her home. But she like she's hard working, she wants to work. When she came at the center, she was able that we were able to provide her with starting capital and now she's making li liquid soap and <laughs> like her progress is so nice that she now has a vision she wants to make liquid soap she wants to create a label for it yeah <laughs> I'd love to ask you more about those startups as well. So um, just as in summary, you guys help obviously with menstruation, hygiene and education, but you also help women with startup ideas. And uh, the uh, Gager Women Foundation is also one, one of the um, initiatives that was successful through a similar kind of um, uh, project. So yeah, tell us about these women's startups. It, that's, uh, what do you provide for them, and and uh, yeah, what kinds of uh, businesses like the liquid soaps that you just mentioned, Reynard? What kind of businesses are being created because of your work? Uh, so uh, for the women's startups, we consider passion. What does someone want to do? Uh, most of them come and they tell us, "Me, I want to do this," because we believe when you do what you want you do it with your role so they come around they tell us what they want to do and then we start from there we mentor them in business and in professional personal growth and professional growth and then also provide them with starting capital to start what yeah to start their businesses yeah right so uh, here, here in europe the statistics have been the same for about 10 years that there's uh, only one percent of venture capital is available to only women owned businesses so about 80% uh, is available, no, 89% is available for men, just for men, male-owned businesses. And uh, about 9% is available for mixed female and male-owned businesses. So that's leaving under 2% available for female fully owned businesses, either one female or a team. Um, so the situation in Europe, yeah, hasn't changed much in the last 10 years, unfortunately. Um, but it starts with educating both men and women about this situation and moving forward to help with that. Um, so as a female business owner, this is something I've come up against myself as well. So that's why, Catherine, I was asking you earlier about, you know, the, the challenges that you've had growing the business. Um, especially as a oh perfect perfect so I think um, I think we've got a video which we're going to put on in a moment but um, before we do um, you know there's going to be the majority of the people that will be listening to this Catherine will be people from the from the UK um, there will be people from uh, from other countries as well who will be listening but, but what sort of message have you got um, you know what what 
you know, if you've got a message that you would like to uh, to give out to the people that have uh, have tuned in for this episode. Um. Uh, thank you for watching, and Scott, thank you for um, uh, supporting, uh, looking out for, you know, people. I think you have a good heart. Um, uh, for whoever, for the people that will be watching this, thank you for uh, watching, and we can do this alone, um, but with your support, you know, I always believe that to, when we come together, we create amazing things so wherever you are whatever you do uh, when we are together i believe amazing things can happen so please join us at k German foundation to make massive impact in the lives of women and girls in uganda excellent thank you and reynard if you've got anything you'd like to uh to add to that before we uh before we put the video on um thank you for inviting us on this podcast and to the people viewing i would like to encourage them to be able to be inclusive in any any way like supporting each other uh in still it, it can be in their countries in other countries yeah it, it doesn't take much to help it just takes a good heart yeah Excellent. and also uh and also uh for us we say uh disability is not inability people that are disabled are able to do anything if you give them the chance. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I very much agree with that. I very much agree with that. So I'm going to try to do something technical now, and I'm going to try to, uh, <laughs> to put on the video from your website. So this video is on uh, the uh, the Gage Women Foundation website. We just felt it would be good for you to, uh, to listen to it. So I'll leave it to, uh, to the video. The Asia Women Foundation started in, at the end of 2015 with around 35 women in Impiji district. Some of our beneficiaries that were school dropouts that were at the verge of being sent for early marriage. With the help that we got from small fundings, we managed to send them back to school. I'm a student, but in my holidays, I make counter books with the Asia Women Foundation and I want to teach other people other children to know how to make books. Currently, the Asia Women Foundation works with over 250 women around the different villages in Impiji district. We offer four basic programs in the communities. We have the education su support that is rendered to girls, those who can't afford to keep in school but would wish to continue with the education. We also practice permaculture in schools and in communities to boost on the nutrition for the school-going children, especially in government-aided schools, and also in our families for the mothers to be able to plant and offer balanced diet for their families. And also the surplus can be used to acquire some materials that can be used to support our families and children, especially in schools, say the books, the pens, and sanitary materials. Under the Gaja Women Foundation, we encourage women to start up their own jobs. Through our mentoring and coaching processes that we render to them, the women are able to start up their own social enterprises that can benefit not only them, but the society where they are living and the environment at large. <laughs> Foundation. 
and our biggest main issue that we are tackling is the menstruation. As you could be knowing, menstruation is one of the hardest issues women face around the world. Not only in Uganda, but even in developed countries, menstruation is one thing that is not easily talked about. And when it comes to Africa, it is always a worse topic. Children are never given ideas about what to expect during their time when they start menstruation. They use filthy material ranging from banana fibers, banana leaves, polystyrene, toilet paper, among others. And with Geja Women Foundation, we believe that menstruation should never isolate, ashamed, or oppress any woman at any given period during their menstruation. Join our move today and be a part of the inspiring change. Geja Women Foundation, inspiring change. That's not the first time I've watched that. I've watched that video uh, a number of times, and I don't know about you, like my my hairs on my arms stick up. It's uh, it's very personal. It's it's very moving, and um, and yeah, it's uh, it's very you know it's it's excellent to to showcase what what you guys do. So, um, I guess it's uh, it's it's time to uh, to thank our listeners. Um, and uh, thank them for uh, for listening today. It's been uh, what I would say quite an emotional um, podcast episode. First of all, I'd better also say thank you to my not so special guest uh, Lorraine, who uh, who co-hosted with me. And I'd also like to say thank you to both uh, Catherine and Reynard for for joining us. So and and also thank you very much for listening. But don't forget, in the notes there will be a link. And I encourage everyone to to have a look, see what difference you can make to people in uh, in Uganda. So thank you all very much. And uh, yeah, once again. Thank you, Catherine, Lorraine, and Maynard. Thank you. Thank you too. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, too. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.